Good afternoon. Today I'll deliver a lecture on the lamb by William Blake. Now in history of English literature, William Blake is now by some uh, he has been you know categorized as a pre-romantic poet, whereas some classify him in the list of romantic poets. Now, even they, they, those who uh, call him a romantic poet, they even say that he is the you know pioneer of romanticism, the beginner. He started you know the the seed, the, he, he put the seed. He, he did so. He did so the seed of romanticism. Now, what is romanticism? You know, romanticism, we can say, sort of celebrates the freedom of English literature. Freedom from the restraints of classicism, from the restraints of, from the grips, from the chains of classical literature. Now, classical literature, Latin and Greek literature. Now, English poets became sort of, you can say, free. Uh, from romantic age onwards because before that even the great poet John Milton he also wrote Paradise Lost on the you know model of classical literature not only that Milton's English is also Latinate fine our poet right now the lamb now William Blake wrote a book, Songs of Innocence and of Experience. Now in Songs of Innocence, you have 19 songs, and in Songs of Experience, you have 27 songs. Now the Lamb, you can say, sort of represents the group, the group of Songs of Innocence. And the Tiger represents the group which one? The group of uh, songs of experience. Right, I will study the lamb. Now, whenever we talk of uh, William Blake, unless we go for exhaust study of his, we talk of his two poems, The Lamb and The Tiger. Now, in The Lamb, we have uh, questions. The child puts the questions, and the child only answers. But uh, in The Tiger, you just have questions, no answers over there. Fine. Now, uh, the painting of the poem, The Lamb, significantly shows the child as a shepherd. Fine. Now, I should remember, if God is as innocent as a lamb, is as dangerous as the tiger. Fine. You know, <clears throat> the lamb. Lamb is image of purity and gentleness. Everything that is crystal, the lamb is clothed in divine delight. Now, uh, in the valley, there is a lamb over there. And the shepherd boy puts the questions. The shepherd boy asks the lamb, Little lamb, who made thee? Who made you? Dost thou know? Dost thou do? Do thou? Thou means you. Do you know who made you? Gave you life and bid thee, asked you, bid thee feed, asked you to feed yourself, to have food, I mean to graze in the meadows by beside the stream and er, over the med med meadows gave the gave you clothing of delight the, the lamb's uh, body has you know woolly covering that is so delightful to touch clothing of delight softest clothing woolly it's but about wool it's bright gave thee gave you such a tender voice. Now you should notice thing that the lamb gets natural protection in stanza 1 and spiritual care in stanza 2. Gave you such a tender voice 
making all the vales, all the valleys rejoice. When the, lamp, when the lamp speaks out, listen to the sound of the lamp. There is happiness in the surrounding, in the area. You can say entire valleys rejoice with the lamp sound. Little lamp, who made thee? Who made you? Does thou know? Do you know who made thee? Who made you? Till now the boy asks the questions. And now the boy only answers the lamp. Little lamp, I'll tell thee. Little lamp, I'll tell you. One who made you, he is called by thy name. One who made you lamb is called like God made you. And God is innocent. Lamb stands for innocence. The God made lamb. And Christ used to call himself, you know what? I'm the lamb of the world. I'm the sacrificed for the good of the world. So one who made you, he, God, is called by thy name, your name. God is called by the name of Lamb. For, because he calls himself Lamb. God is meek. By meek, you mean humble. And God is mild, gentle, and not easily angered. God became a little child. So look, lamb stands for innocence. God is innocent. God called himself lamb. So lamb and God, they are equal. And then God became a child as well. When you see a child, you say, this child is just God, as innocent as God. So lamb, God, child, all are same. I a child and thou a lamb and you a lamb. We are both called by his name, God's name. Here it is most certain that the child and the lamb are sharing their image of innocence. <clears throat> little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. Thee means you. Now, uh, it is a prayer offered at the end of the hymn. What? Our bliss, B L I W S. My bliss, what do you mean? Uh, it means unalloyed happiness, pure happiness. Now, at the end of the hymn, we offer a prayer. What do we say? Our bliss is in God's blessing. Now these two lines remind you of our prayer. Last two lines. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. Now, uh, like I in the poem, I'll tell thee, I'll tell thee, who is this I? Here I have eight interpretations of I. Like, you know, the boy asks the questions and the boy only answers. The boy says, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Now, who is this I? You have eight interpretations of I. Number one. I stands for the poet. The poet as a prophet. You know, communicates his prophecy, the poet's message. So, child is the mouthpiece. But through this mouthpiece, the poet actually is conveying his own message. I could be God himself. God speaking through the poet. Because God has endowed the poet with the special faculty of imagination. You know something highly religious matter and all, we say ordinary brain cannot write that. God endows the, you know, gives that talent to the poet. He writes something about me. So I could be God himself speaking to the poet because God has endowed the poet 
with the special faculty of imagination by which the poet can achieve from the image of lamb the impression of innocence. Third one, the eye could be the child endowed with the wisdom of its entity. The child is with the wisdom because it, and I am quoting something over here, lies in Abraham's bosom all the year. What's worth? The image of the child associates the poem with Christ, God's Son, whom God had sent to preach the mankind, to preach the mankind the lesson of love. The human child can instruct the lamb because in the human child is the most divine. Fourth one, the eye represents the voice omniscient and omnipresent. You know God is present everywhere and God knows everything. The voice narrates God with the variety of his creation. God himself is beyond this voice. Fifth, I could be the voice of Mother Earth, suggested by the word veils. The lamb was playing on the lap of his mother and now the mother explains to the child the reality of being the expression of divine that it is. Sixth one, I could be the Eve, you know Mother Eve, Adam and Eve, yeah. I could be the Eve and the two children, Abel, A-B-E-L and Cain, C-A-I-N. Abel was killed by Cain, hence the lamb and the tiger. Have a look. You know, Adam and Eve or Mother Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. A B E L. Now Abel was killed by Cain. God has created lamb, and the same God has created tiger. Tiger kills the lamb. Seventh interpretation of I. I could be the voice of Mother Mary. M A R I. Conflict like Mother Mary understood that this child of mine is no ordinary child. I could be the voice of Mother Mary, conferring on, on Jesus his identity of being one beyond the human child born to Mary and Joseph. Jesus is a historical reality, but is Christ as well, a truth beyond history. Eighth interpretation of I. It could be the voice of the Lamb only. The lamb representing the spirit of innocence, aware of some majestic name of its own identity beyond the apparent self. <clears throat> beyond the apparent self. Now I will read something on Jesus more central to Christian tradition is the inverse metaphor that Jesus is the Lamb of God, an innocent Lamb without blemish, acceptable to God as a sacrifice for our sins. In Blake, as in many writers before him, the identification of Jesus as Lamb is connected to the Incarnation and the nativity. The arrival of the divine among us not only in human form but as a baby born among common people and among animals. The child who asks the lamb who made thee in the lamb answers his own question and tells it how the three lamb child and Jesus 
are all connected. He is called by thy name, for he calls himself a lamb. He is meek and is mild. He became a little child. I a child and thou a lamb. We are called by his name. But Jesus grieved to be a man and made the supreme sacrifice at his crucifixion. That is, after all, by his called a lamb. And in doing so, embraced us all again in our sorrows and death as well as in our joy and life. So, this was the Lamb by William Blake. Thank you.